this is the squishy slide. <laughs> Legal term. Yes. Base op 44. Uh, I, I've read this over and over again. It seems to say one thing and then undoes it by saying something else. So the method, and this is, when it talks about the method, the asset smoothing method should, bear a re should produce actual values of assets that bear a reasonable relationship to the market value. And the method is likely to produce an actual value of assets that in the actuary's judgment satisfies the following. The asset values fall within a reasonable range around the corresponding market values and, and I emphasize and, any difference between the actual value of assets and the market value are recognized within a reasonable period of time. Mm. But then the squishy part says, well, forget what we just said. In lieu of that, uh, satisfying both of those, uh, the method could be acceptable if the actuary thinks that it's an or. Produce values within a sufficiently narrow range around market value or recognize the differences in a sufficiently short period. So it says it and both, but if, if the actuary thinks doesn't have to be and, we could say or. That's why it's squishy. But the two measures down below on the or, within a sufficiently narrow range, to us means how close is it? How close is mostly relevant to the quarter decision? The impact of different quarters, if, if you have 120% quarter, you're saying it, if your smooth value is 120% of your market value, that one-sixth of the actual value of assets that you're using in funding isn't even there. And if you move it up to 150% and you allow 150% quarter, it's one-third of your assets aren't really there in the market value. And the June 30th, 2009 SD surge ratio of 131% may not be sufficiently close to MVA. I don't think we've, we've finalized a recommendation or a decision on that. There's still discussions going on in actual circles on that. Um, it's, it's a subject of debate uh, amongst actuaries nationwide. The other measure, how long, that's relevant to the smoothing percentage. SD SIRS uses the expected value method. And 25, each year, 25% of the difference between what we expect the actual value to be and the market value, what it is, is recognized. Under that method, the AVA within four years would be within seven, um, the market value would be within 7% of the AVA, and within five years it's 5%, and within 11 years it's 1%. So our, our preliminary conclusion is that the SD SIRS, the sufficiently short standard, is likely met. We're showing on slide 28, uh, over the next five years, the city's ARC projections. And we're showing them under six um, scenarios. And, the, and you'll see later on there's many more that we show them under. On the far left, uh, down below in the chart, you see the smoothing period. It shows 21 to 25%, then 120% quarter, 15-year amortization, and avoid negative amortization. The answer is yes. Whenever you see anything that's in a light green, it means it's the current methods. If it turns to pink, it means it's a change. So going from A to B, the difference is just going to the uh, uh, changing the quarter from 120 to 130. And uh, if you look at the graph, um, A is the green line up on top, the highest arc. And the black one is just behind the yellow one. And you see over a five, over the five-year period, there isn't much of a difference at the end of the five years, but there is a significant dif difference in the first fiscal year. On the far right, uh, F, item F, is, is the maximum amount of smoothing, and we're certainly not... Uh, even considering that, but just to sh it's showing you the impact. If you went to 10% smoothing, eliminated the quarter, 30-year amortization, and avoid negative amortization. This is just to give you the goalposts um, for the arc for the city. And on the f next page, we have the UAL projections. Currently, we're at one point um, eyeballing it. Was it three or four billion? But See the growth in the UAL based on the different funding methodologies? I will just turn briefly to a stress testing other scenarios. We'll look at 30 years. Right now, under the current methodologies, which is 15 years for gains and losses, that's where the cursor is there, 25% smoothing and negative amortization and 120% quarter. The 
Top chart is showing you the growth of liabilities, and the line is the assets. The actuarial value, smooth value, is the gold line, and the market value is the green line. And under this scenario, we're going from 78% funded to 99% funded. I'm going to change some investment returns, but before I do it, I want a complete explanation, uh, my explanation of the slide. This column here where the cursor is are the actual arcs by year and the UAL. And down below would be the city contribution as a percent of pay. And we break it down between the normal cost, the unfunded liability, and the negative amortization payment. And the investments is where it's at. It's, I don't think the soundness of the system is going to be impacted by these actual techniques, the investments uh, strategy does is far more, more important. Summary, um, again, we are making absolutely no recommendation here today, but laying out the two options available to you. No changes or modify the funding methodology. W widen or remove the quarter. And that's really, uh, uh, widen or remove are about the same thing. If you go to 130%, in effect, you're right there. So it's, it's like eliminating it. Lower smoothing percentage, but I think that's probably going to be off the table because to do that, you've got to uh, do the first one as well. And if you're going to do the first one, uh, it's more redundant doing the second one. And then increasing the amortization from the current 15 years would require uh, also the removal of no negative amortization to have a meaningful impact. If you elect to modify the funding methodology, you have the choice to apply the change to all future years or just apply the change temporarily to the fiscal year 2009 losses. And a decision isn't needed on this until October when we'll be preparing our actual valuation for presentation the next month or, or maybe perhaps December. And then um, just as an appendix, uh, we've got examples on how your asset smoothing works, an example on negative amortization, and then detailed uh, projections for each plan sponsor on the UAL and the ARC. We've used this slide before in presentations, but your current smoothing method annually will accept 100 percent of what, what the assumed rate of return is, but only one-fourth of the difference between the actual return uh, and the assumed rate. It's presently subject to an 81-20 quarter. And as we've been saying all morning, it's likely it will apply to the June 30, 2009 results. And uh, we've already discussed the last bullet. 